Good morning. Today is the 14th Sunday after Trinity, and this is a service of morning prayer. The hour cometh and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name, amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our psalms for this morning begin with number 90. Psalm 90. Mm -hmm. Lord, thou hast been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever the earth and the world were made, Thou art God from everlasting and world without end. Thou turnest man to destruction. Again thou sayest, Come again, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. As soon as thou scatterest them, they are even as asleep, and fade away suddenly like the grass. 
In the morning it is green and groweth up, but in the evening it is cut down, dry it up, and withereth. For we consume away in thy displeasure, and are afraid at thy wrathful indignation. Thou hast set our misdeeds before thee, and our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For when thou art angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end, as it were a tale that is told. In the, the days of our age are threescore years and ten, and though men be so strong that they come to fourscore years, yet is their strength and but labor and sorrow, so soon passeth it away, and we are gone. But who regardeth the power of thy wrath, or feareth aright thy indignation? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Turn thee again, O Lord, at the last, and be gracious unto thy servants. O satisfy us with thy mercy, and that soon, so shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Comfort us again now, after the time that thou hast plagued us, and for the years wherein we have suffered adversity. Show thy servants thy work, and their children thy glory, and the glorious majesty of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper thou the work of our hands upon us, O prosper thou our handiwork. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 91. Whoso dwelleth under the defense of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, Thou art my hope and my stronghold, my God in him will I trust. For he shall deliver thee from the snare of the hunter and from the noisome pestilence. He shall defend thee under his wings and thou shalt be safe under his feathers. His faithfulness and truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for any terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the sickness that destroyeth in the noonday. A thousand shall fall beside thee, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Yea, with thine eyes shalt thou behold, and see the reward of the ungodly. For thou, Lord, art my hope, thou hast set thine house of defense very high. There shall no evil happen unto thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee in their hands, that thou hurt not thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt go upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou tread under thy feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him up, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will hear him. Yea, I am with him in trouble. I will deliver him, and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him, and show him my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 92. Uh -huh. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most Highest, to tell of thy loving kindness early in the morning, 
and of thy truth in the night season. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the lute, upon a loud instrument and upon the harp. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy works, and I will rejoice in giving praise for the operation of thy hands. O Lord, how glorious are thy works, thy thoughts are very deep, and unwise men doth not well consider this, and a fool doth not understand it. When the ungodly are green as the grass, and when all the workers of wickedness do flourish, then shall they be destroyed forever, but thou, Lord, art the most highest forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, lo, thine enemies shall perish, and all the workers of wickedness shall be destroyed. But my horn shall be exalted like the horn of an unicorn, for I am anointed with fresh oil. Mine eye also shall see his lust of mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear of his desire of the wicked that arise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like a cedar in Lebanon. Such as are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of the house of our God. They also shall bring forth more fruit in their age, and shall be fat and well liking, that they may show how true the Lord my strength is, and that there is no unrighteousness in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here we begin at the sixth chapter of the book of the prophet Micah. Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. O my people, what have I done unto thee, and wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed thee out of the house of servants, and I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Here endeth the first lesson. The Te Deum Laudamus. <laughs> we praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable true and only son, 
also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst tumble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Cover them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Here begin at the 16th verse of the 5th chapter of the Epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God." But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. Here endeth the second lesson. The Benedictus S. Domine. Uh, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son 
and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O God, may clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Collect for the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, Give unto us the increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain that which thou dost promise. Make us to love that which thou dost command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collects for Peace and Grace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by thy governance may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning. When I uh, first became the vicar here, before I was the rector, when I was first the vicar, and uh, did really become a full-time pastor here at All Saints Anglican Church, one of the ways that I celebrated this new stage in my ministry was to treat myself to one last big purchase before I ceased being a full-time real estate appraiser. I bought a 38-volume series of the, of the writings of the Church Fathers that had originally been published in the 19th century during the e- earliest days of English editions of the Fathers. Now, if you are ever in my study here at, at the church, you can see them in a prominent place on my bookshelf. Though um, this was a reprint of a public domain translation and works that are really readily available online or electronically, The set is currently out of physical print, and used copies go for about 10 times what I paid for mine five years ago, last time I checked. So that's probably the best return on investment (laughs) that I've made in, in my adult life. Well, over the years, I have certainly made good use of this volume, these volumes, this this set, um, as reference material. I go to it quite often. But until just a couple of months ago, I had never made any effort to make a systematic reading of them, starting with volume one and going all the way through. So for the last eight weeks or so, it's been part of my, my daily custom, my daily discipline, to at least read a small chunk every day. So this week, what I've been going through is Justin Martyr's first apology. Now, Justin was a second century philosopher from from Samaria who became a Christian, and he wrote a series of persuasive letters or books to non-Christian authorities arguing for the Christian faith in the face of local persecution. These were his apologies for the Christian faith, his explanations and arguments on behalf of the Christian faith. 
If you follow our Church Father reading plan during Lent, you're going to get a sample of his works, including this first apology. He makes his argument in this book in a variety of ways. At times, he appeals to the philosophical reasoning of his day, drawing on his own background as a philosopher. Other times, he appeals to Old Testament prophecy. Um, other times, he appeals to common sense applications of justice. And then at times, he appeals to the virtuous lives of Christians compared to the accepted moral standards among the pagans. This appeal includes examples for, uh, of how Christ changed people's lives once they became Christians. Take, for example, these two passages from chapter 14 and chapter 15 of Justin Martyr's First Apologies. We who formerly delighted in fornication, but now embrace chastity alone. We who formerly used magical arts dedicate ourselves to the good and unbegotten God. We who valued above all things the acquisition of wealth and possessions now bring what we have into a common stock and communicate to everyone in need. We who hated and destroyed one another on account of their different manners would not live with men of a different tribe. Now, since the coming of Christ, live familiarly with them and pray for our enemies and endeavor to persuade those who hate us unjustly to live conformably to the good precepts of Christ, to the end that they may become partakers with us of the same joyful hope of a reward from God the ruler of all. And then skipping forward to chapter 15, he writes, For what shall I say, too, of the countless multitude of those who have reformed intemperate habits and learned these things? For Christ called not the just nor the chaste to repentance, but the ungodly and the licentious and the unjust, his words being, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. For the heavenly Father desires rather the repentance than the punishment of the sinner. So in effect, Justin Martyr is arguing that Christians have indeed turned from the works of the flesh to the fruit of the Spirit, as we read in today's epistle. Uh, let's, let's this excerpt from today's epistle. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Now we could easily see these verses and assume that St. Paul is, like Justin Martyr a few decades later, contrasting the pagans with the Christians. We could assume that he's saying, the world looks like that, but we Christians look like this. We used to walk in the vices of the world, but Christ has made us virtuous. And we do see a contrast between the unbeliever and the believer implicit in our text. But when we read the entire epistle to the Galatians, we see that much of the letter is rebuking errant Christian uh, errant thinking and behaviors among Christians. Much of the letter is making the argument that the Galatian Christians were walking after the works of the flesh rather than walking by God's Spirit. Now granted, the Galatians had fallen into a false and legalistic piety rather than antinomianism. That is, the Galatians were downplaying the work of the Spirit and Christ's grace in favor, in favor of a legalistic approach to Old Testament law. They were not promoting an anything goes now that we're saved sort of licentiousness. That's not what they were doing. But in many ways, what they were doing ended up in the same place, especially with respect to rivalries, dissensions, divisions, enmity, strife, and the like, even if they weren't promoting idolatry, witchcraft, and sexual immorality. You see, the problem we Christians must face is that we, too, are tempted to follow the works of the flesh. Indeed, we often fall into those works to our spiritual peril. 
Now, at different times and in different places, these works of the flesh might look differently, the kinds of things that we tend to fall into as Christians, um, as, and, and the kinds of things that, that the world around us is more prone to in a particular time and place. And that's why St. Paul concludes his vice list with uh, the, the phrase, and things like these. Now, our times are characterized by a radical approach to individual freedom. One way this manifests itself is an almost universal cultural rejection of biblical standards on sexual immorality. Within the church, this might take the, the form of so-called affirming Christianity, where homosexual and other alternative relationships are accepted often by claiming that the Bible's authors just didn't really understand things the way we do today. Or it might take the form of downplaying the sacredness of marriage by tacitly approving divorce for any and all reasons, no matter how frivolous those reasons might be. Or it might take the form of secretly approving of uh, pornography or cohabitation prior to marriage as private matters that really are nobody else's concern. Regardless of the specific form, we are, in essence, putting the flesh in the driver's seat and allowing our impulses to dictate terms rather than submitting to God and his word. Now, another fleshly way that our culture's radical approach to individual freedom can manifest within the church is fostering divisiveness and enmity. Within our culture, this might take the form of political polarization. Not only do we see those with other political views as mistaken or in error or being foolish, no, we often see them as wicked and dangerous. We give ourselves a pass to hate people on the other side. Or we look at another group as the source of all society's problems rather than looking within to our own sinful hearts. Racism and classism often become the results of this, just like greed, selfishness, and deceit. Anything goes, our culture says, as long as I or my group come out on top. The ends justify the means. Tragically, we can easily hide these vices behind piety and religion. It's all too easy to baptize our works of the flesh. Jesus would hate those people too, we might say. Or Jesus wouldn't fault me for following my heart, we might say. Indeed, this religious justification for walking after the flesh is exactly what the Galatians were doing. In our Old Testament reading at morning prayer, we see this addressed in Micah 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. All of our religious observances mean nothing if we're walking after the flesh. Outward piety without inward and outward change makes us no better than the Pharisees. This kind of hypocritical Christianity is not what spread the gospel in the days of St. Paul or Justin Martyr, and it will not do so in our day either. The good news is that our Lord delights in repentance, as Justin Martyr noted. We are always given the opportunity to examine our consciences, to look at the scriptures, and then to amend our ways, to change our thinking and our behaviors. This is why St. Paul tells us to crucify the flesh if we belong to Christ. Now, in our baptismal vows, we promise to fight manfully, as our prayer book says, to fight against the world, the flesh, and the devil. And it is indeed a battle. The world, 
the flesh and the devil want to drag you down and to claim your soul. And if they can do so in a way that makes it look like you're still religious and pious, they will do so. The enemy will and does fight against you. But, Scripture says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Lord is on your side, and he has given you his word, prayer, fasting, the sacraments, and the very indwelling of the Holy Ghost to strengthen you in this fight. You are not alone. You have the Lord, and you have his church. The penitent is never turned away from Christ and his table. You may have noticed that our text speaks of the works of the flesh, but it speaks of the fruit of the Spirit. The virtues St. Paul talks about are the, are the result of an internal change brought about by God himself, just as they are the result of actively rejecting the works of the flesh. Part of the beauty of fruit is that it grows and propagates itself. St. Jerome writes this, He has spoken elegantly by allotting works to the flesh and fruits to the spirit. Vices come to nothing and perish in themselves. Virtues multiply and abound in fruit. And additionally, since the fruits of the spirit are not works in of themselves, we can neither drum them up nor can we take credit for them. Martin Luther writes this, Paul does not call these works of the Spirit, but gives them a nobler designation of fruits, because those who have them give glory to God and by their virtues point others to the teaching and faith of Christ. As Christians, isn't this what we want our lives to do? To glorify God, to point others to Christ, and to bear the kind of spiritual fruit that both grows in our own lives and spills over into the lives of others. Like the seed planted in the good soil in the parable of the sower, we want to see a harvest of 10, 50, or 100 fold. And indeed, this is the very thing that Justin Martyr pointed out to the Roman officials. That's what was happening. By Christ's mercy, this is what he can and indeed does do in our lives as well. As St. Paul said regarding the spread of the gospel, one plants, another waters, but God gives the increase. In our collect, we prayed this, Almighty and everlasting God, give unto us the increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain that which thou dost promise. Make us to love that which thou dost command, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We trust that this is a prayer that God answers with love again and again. He did so for St. Paul, he did so for Justin Martyr, and he will do so for us as we fight against the flesh by the power of God's Spirit. And we say this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The service continues with the prayers for those in civil authority. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States and to all in authority, wisdom, and strength to know and do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy, and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldest be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for thy holy church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, 
and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate. That it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>